The time has come to complete our pipe lock project. So today in the final episode, we will make the key so that we can actually open and close the lock. I'm John Switzer, welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Now I completed the key probably a week ago. I've been editing this video incrementally over the last week, trying to get things up and working on other projects. So I already know how this went. I already know it works but it did not go smoothly. So there are some things that I would change about the way I did this, or at the very least, I am now more aware of what the problems might be than I was when I started. And I'll tell you what, watching the video as I edit shows me a lot more than what I actually see when I'm working in the shop because the camera usually has a better angle on what's going on than what I have while I'm forging. But anyways, let's get to work. And the key is going to be this piece of 3 8 round bar. So the first thing we have to do is create a hole in there. And we can drill that at the vise. If you're really good with a hand drill and that's all you've got, go ahead and drill it at the vise. You can drill it in the drill press. Putting it in a lathe would be the absolute best way, but I know most people don't have a lathe at home, so I'm not going to go that route. I'm going to go ahead and drill a quarter inch hole in this bar at the drill press, I think. Now it would be way better to use a center bit on the lathe to get this center punch mark. Since we're assuming not everybody has one, I'm going to do the best I can this way. And just very light, I'm going to push it over a little bit. It's pretty easy to eyeball it at center. It's a small piece. And once you get it kind of pushed to center, deepen it. Now I seriously doubt that my drill press table is perfectly flat or square. It's kind of an old drill press that doesn't have a clamp on it and it's loose. So, it, so I'm going to drill a little bit, turn the vise, drill a little bit, turn the vise, and hopefully that will help keep everything going straight down. piece of baling wire that I've bent just a little bit longer than what the stub is on the bolt to make sure it goes all the way down and it does. So that's deep enough and I didn't break through so that will work. I just want to heat up that end. I don't want too much of it hot. I have this swedge that has a triangular impression. At least it's supposed to be triangular. And that gets a good start on the end there. And I want to see if I can get that to drive over the bolt here. It's still a little bit too big. So we're going to have to sneak up on it. I'm kind of driving it one corner at a time to see if I can get it to push over. A triangular tapered punch would probably be the way to go here. And tapering the end of this a little bit more might help. Now this one from the previous lock is a bit smaller, so I'm going to use that to kind of start opening this up. But my tongs and my hand are just right in the way, aren't they? Now this is not perfectly symmetrical, so you have to pay attention to what it looks like and make sure you put the key on the same way every time.
And if it's just not going to fit, and this one doesn't really want to, file this tenon down just a little bit more. And even add a little taper to it. This is definitely a fiddly process, like so many things are. Certainly getting there. Okay, so I went and ground a piece of mild steel down to a triangle, and I'm going to see if I can use that to open this up some. Yes, that will be better. It's still going to really bend this, though. I don't remember the other one being anywhere near this much trouble. The problem with straightening it is that all I do is end up opening it, closing it, opening it, closing it. Now, I don't remember the process of making the key on the last version of this lock that I did being anywhere near as frustrating as that was. The key is ugly, it's misshapen, it is completely functional on the other hand. This will get in here and it will open up that, that lock or unscrew the, the bolt, however you want to look, look at it. And this is then a functional lock. So the key is completely functional. It's kind of ugly. I think I'm going to make another one. But because I'm on to day three of this video, later I'll make a whole new key and this one will go in the garbage. But I can at least use it as a sample to show you what I have in mind for the top of the key. This last one I did, I just split this with a chisel and then forged it out. This one I think I'm going to run through the bandsaw and put an open-ended split open that up and then curl it around either heart-shaped or little scrolls or something like that just to be a little bit different. I'm going to start by drawing this out together. Just make sure it's not hot enough to weld. Okay, those are starting to be a little hard to work with, so I'm going to go ahead and spread them now. Just put a chisel in the slit there. Or try to. There we go.
Okay, so that's kind of where I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to just take the scrolling pliers and I'm going to bring this in. And you can bring it into a heart shape. You can do whatever you want. I'm actually going to try to put a little scroll on, make a circle, put a scroll here and make a circle. So these are overlapping little elements there. I don't know how well that'll work, but we'll try it. Like I say, you can certainly just leave it right there. I don't think I have enough material to do exactly what I was thinking, but I'm going to try anyways. So what I want to see is if this will then continue around. Yeah, this isn't really what I had in mind. I needed to split considerably more material. I'm going to open that back up. I think it looked better in the little heart shape. I think I'm just going to leave it right there. Now, personally, I found that kind of painful to watch. That was kind of a frustrating process. And it was really mostly due to not filing this little stub down far enough. I left it too big and it just wasn't going to fit in the hole that I had in the end of the key even though now it fits because I've done some filing and I've done some other things to it. So, so we've actually got a key that fits. It's a little crooked. It's a little off center. I've messed with this and messed with it, and I'm not going to mess with it anymore because it does work. So the thing to do at this point, if I want a nicer looking key, is just to start all over again. I think I've spent more time messing with this than if I had just thrown this out and started with a fresh one. But sometimes I'm a little bit stubborn, and I like to see if I can fix some of these problems. And really, I think the main issue here is just that I left this too big. Now let's think about what the mathematics of this is, because really, if I had thought about it ahead of time, I could have avoided some of this. I drilled a quarter inch hole in the end of the key. Now, if you know your math, you know that the circumference of a circle is 3.14 times the diameter. So that's a little bit over three quarters of an inch. If I had filed those side so that it was no more than a quarter inch flat, that's three quarters inch around the triangle, which means there would be plenty of material here to shape this to a triangle and it should fit very nicely. But I left this too big and that didn't happen. It was sort of a problem. I've dealt with it and now it works just fine, but, but think of that ahead of time. The other option I would have had is start with a much heavier piece of material, maybe half inch, and then the wall would have been thicker and it would have been easier to drive it down over this and make it fit exactly without crushing the wall as I went. Because trying to drive this thin wall down wrinkled up the wall of the key and it was really not the way to go. So a little bit of forethought, maybe doing a test piece, and we probably could have avoided some of these problems. Or I should say, I could have avoided these problems. If you're paying attention to what I'm telling you, you can probably avoid these problems and you don't need to make the same mistakes. I talked about the back end of the lock here having wrapped up a little bit too tight. I have since fixed that. The way that I found that worked the best to, to tighten this up was to take a pair of vice grip C-clamps without the swivel pads, just these plain pads, because they actually fit down inside there. And I set it as tight as I could cold. And then I took them off, tightened this a half turn, heated this up with a torch, clamped it, then I tightened it another half turn, heated it up with a torch again and clamped it, and I was able to bring that together. I tried to do this just with a pair of tongs, but the reins on the tongs are just too springy. I couldn't get the kind of leverage I needed to just really clamp that and squeeze it together. But these work pretty darn well, so if you've got a problem like that, this might be a solution, but then again, your problem might be a little bit unique compared to my problems. Face it, we've all got problems. Anyways, does it work? I have persisted, and yes, this lock works. It moves much more smoothly than it did. Now, I did make sure to run the tap through there one last time to clean it up if I had deformed that a little bit through all that other messing around. But that goes down there just fine. And once you get that lined up, it's just a matter then of threading it in 
as far as you feel like you need to. And this is a relatively secure lock. You can't open it unless you take that bolt back out. Yes, you could stick a pair of needle nose pliers in there and you can probably open it that way. Somebody said you could probably get a nut driver on there. I suspect that's true. If you wanted to, you could substitute this bolt for a socket cap screw and just use an Allen wrench and you'd save all that trouble making the key. But I think learning to make keys is going to be one of the key components of learning to make locks. So I need to get way better at making keys. And this lock is not meant to be a high security lock. This is just the lock that keeps the kids out of your tool chest or something like that. It's not meant for locking up your business when you go on vacation for a month. Here it is then side by side with the one that was made following the directions out of the Spruce Forge manual, which actually went smoother because they had already taken the time to figure all this stuff out so I didn't have to. And you make a lot fewer mistakes if you follow proven instructions than if you're kind of winging it. And on this one, I was winging it a little bit. I really do hope you were able to learn something watching me struggle through the process of making this lock and key. It really is a very simple lock. It just takes a little bit of fiddling to get everything to work right. And it is a good introduction to lock making because things do have to work together to make it work even if they aren't machinist perfect tolerances. If you did enjoy the video, I appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Ring the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to be notified when I make new videos. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.